Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Donovan from Salt of the Streets, and this is our very first edition of the Review Preview. This month's books for February is uh, In Order to Live by Young Me Park. So we'll be reviewing this book, and our preview will be for The Indifferent Stars Above by Daniel James Brown. So, here we go. Um... I've done three live streams on this book already, and so you can go back and you can find those things there on our Instagram at Salted Streets. Um, we also have our YouTube, obviously, at Salted Streets, where you're watching this now. We have our saltedstreets.com, where you can find all our information, including our own personal social media. I'm at Salt of the Street on Twitter and at Alpaca underscore Donovan on Instagram, and Colin's at Big Bird Off. on both those things. With that, we will commence. Um, I've talked a lot about this book. Obviously, I did probably 30 minutes or so for all these live streams. And so I'm not going to, I'm trying not to repeat myself too much. Um, so I'm not going to do, I'm going to do only one reading out of here. And that'll be towards the end. And that will be kind of the one line that stood out to me the most for these books. And so there will be something I'll be doing for every edition of the review preview from here on out. So one of the things that I want to talk about for this book in particular for In Order to Live by Young Me Park is that this book is extremely important. And I've touched on that in a few different ways in all of the live streams, right? So thought about this a lot. It's uh, Saturday now, so we did the last live stream on Thursday. I'm thinking a lot of uh, talk about book banning and things like that lately. Uh, you know, books with transsexuals taken out and blah, 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 blah. And uh, what, there's the one, uh, the classic that was just a mouse, right? That was just taken, uh, it wasn't even taken out of schools. It was taken off of the curriculum for a particular school district. So that's that in and of itself was blown out of proportion. But in thinking all these things and these books that I'm reading the book clubs, trying to get as many people as I can into it. This is something, this book, In Order to Live, I think should be required reading for high school seniors, right? Especially as those... High school seniors in particular, people that are right about to enter into true adulthood, they are going to be embraced by as full of freedom as you can have at 18 years old. There's still a few things being kept from you, but for the most part, you're about as free as it can get. Um, you are going to face the choice of going to college, which we've talked about time and time again, has now been infected by Marxist ideologies. Um, it's extremely important that people understand what I call there, the natural end to communism, right? This book displays the natural end to communism. And you can't escape it. There is no getting around it. Um, if your country is to embrace communism, this is to be the natural end. There will be people enslaved. There will be people tortured. There will be people killed. There will be a small, small minority of people that have anything that is worth a damn in that country and everyone else will have nothing. And I think because... We're 18 years old. When you enter into college, we all know the children are, are easily influenced, right? And so when you enter into college, one of the most influential times of your life, you're going to have a lot of big discussions and talk about big ideas, ideally, hopefully. That's, I did not mean that. Um, if you don't understand the true dangers of the ideology being presented to you, it is so much easier to accept it. And these things are shied away from right especially in america when we're talking about things that are being influenced by the chinese the people the stars right let's be specific about this the stars that young people are looking up to the most are the ones that are the mo the least willing to talk about the dangers of the chinese communist party and the influences they have on our country and on our planet right we talked about i talked about in the second live stream i think hit really hard that Everything that is happening in North Korea is being funded by the Chinese, right? The small bit of money that the North Korean government actually does make in drug sales and things like that either get funneled directly into the, into the party or they are spent immediately on defense funds so they can try and make better missiles so they can try and have a legitimate threat to America and other countries to have a seat at the table through force instead of having any type of legitimate country or government or economy at all so i will continue colin and i will continue to try and impress upon people and on ourselves to continue to evaluate our relationship with the chinese communist party and with the country of china and try and do everything that we can to separate ourselves from them not because we don't like chinese people not because we don't like asian people but because the control and the influence that the chinese communist party 
has is so extremely dangerous, right? Not only in North Korea, but we also talked about the Uyghur Muslims. They have a million plus Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps and work camps right now. They're stealing their hair. They're stealing their organs. They are f performing forced abortions on them. They're murdering those people. They are denying them any semblance of human rights at all. And we have enormous uh, charitable foundations that we, like Black Lives Matter that we'll talk about in, in this week's episode that are devout communists. They admit that they are com that they are Marxists, right? They are embracing and openly trying to spread the same ideology that is locking up Uyghur Muslims and North Koreans and denying them basic human rights while they talk about how horrible they have it here in America. We shouldn't be accepting this. This shouldn't be... I want to be very careful about what I say here because every idea deserves to be spoken. But this is an ideology that should be so easy to destroy. It should be so easy to defeat because the evidence is right here. It is in a book that will cost you $18 at Barnes & Noble. This is the truth right here. This is is the proof that you need that that is happening. That what they are saying is nonsense. This book, and as many others like it as you would like to find, should be required reading for high school seniors before they enter full adulthood, and especially before they go to university or college. And I would defend that to the end. This is extremely important information that it should, not, should not be forgotten and should be spread as far as we can get it. Um, something that I said on the third live stream, and I didn't realize that I said it, so thank you to Erin, because she's actually the one that pulled it for me. We must do everything to preserve freedom, right? That stands true domestically, internationally, and that's not me. Don't take anything from too much from what I'm saying, right? We don't need to be spreading freedom all over the world. We need to do everything that we can to preserve freedom. Part of that one of those steps is taking power from the Chinese Communist Party because they are actively working to deny freedom from the people in their country and other people around the world. So we will have discussions probably for the rest of our lives and certainly through the life of this show on what that looks like in different steps that we, different things that we can do to execute that. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was the institute that I talked about, what it was the um, Teach North Korean Refugees Program, right? That's a thing that you can donate to. That's something that you can experience. You can go and you can, if you're an English teacher, if you have that expertise, you can donate your time to them. That's a, an amazing thing that you can do to help teach North Koreans English, help teach North Korean refugees English, right? Defectors, because they're not just refugees, because they can't go back. There's no hope of going back. And that's something that Yemi Park actually hits on in this book. So I want to take a second to talk about that. They're not refugees because they cannot go back. There is no hope of going back. If they go back to North Korea, they will die. They will either be murdered on the spot or placed into a camp and they will die. They are defectors. They have no choice but to leave. They do not have a home. They cannot go back to where they are from. That is an extremely important d distinction to draw here, right? And that's not to belittle the idea or the status of a refugee, but these people are, they're beyond that. They have no hope of return. They only have hope outside of their home country. So we need to remember that. Um, and the card somewhere. Sorry about that. Shuffle that back into my, there we go. Um, last thing we need to be, we need to be liberating these people, right? And I don't know, I don't know exactly what that looks like. So this is something, an idea I'm going to explore with Colin, other people that we talked to about this, because definitely this, I'm going to bring up on every episode from here on out and every guest that we have on, we're going to be talking about North Korea. We're going to be talking about the Chinese communist party, the influence that they have and what we can do to defeat that. Because I can't think of a more worthy cause for a show that is devoted to freedom that is focused on freedom than defeating the chinese communist party and their anti-freedom ways can't think of a better cause for us to have so that's uh, part of our message of freedom if if you ask me so i don't know what that looks like and i'm definitely not saying we need to be going in and like forcing regime change in these places because i don't think that america should have those kinds of influences right but we have got to be doing everything that we can to 
to liberate these people from these horrible statuses. And I don't know if it is, let's prioritize them on, on, the, on immigration, right? Let's bring as many North Korean refugees or defectors here as we possibly can. Let's do everything that we can to bring as many North Korean defectors here as possible, right? Why do we not have outposts established in Mongolia and in South Korea to just take them here? This is the most freedom-focused place you can be, right? This is the place, the, the polar opposite of North Korea. Bring them here. These are the people that we should, that we should be having here, that we should be hosting here, right? We, when the talks of immigration come about, there are talks on uh, the conservative side uh, a lot about, I'm not even going to characterize it that way. There are a lot of talks about we want to make sure that we have skilled workers here, right? We want to make sure we have skilled people here that are going to add to the country. But we also want to give people an opportunity to just have a better life. There are some people there that maybe don't have an immediately marketable skill, that maybe don't have something that will immediately, uh, noticeably, tangibly improve the country right off the bat, right? That doesn't mean they shouldn't have a chance of freedom. That doesn't mean they shouldn't have a chance to be here. Everyone deserves a chance of freedom because this is the only place in the world where our, those basic human rights are protected from the government, right? So let's prioritize North Koreans in that category of immigration. Let's get as many North Korean refugee defectors here as we possibly can through that status. I would, I would defend that to the end. I am in major favor of that, right? I don't care. I don't care what, what percentage of the immigration cap there is, that is. All of them. As many as we can get. Bring them here. Give them it makes me emotional. It makes me very upset to just talking in this book about people being forgotten. They don't know that they exist. They don't have the right for people to know that they exist. And that is beyond dark. So on that note, I'm going to read this section that I have here, right? Um, let's see. I have the card in here somewhere. If I can find it, there it is. Okay. And this is from when Yeonmi Park was speaking in front of the UN, actually. Um, she says, when I was crossing the Gobi Desert, I wasn't really afraid of dying as much as I was afraid of being forgotten. I was scared that I would die in the desert and nobody would know. No one would know my name or would care if I had lived or died. But you have listened and you have cared, right? So I talked about this on live stream the one thing that we can do is read this book and express that we know and we care right not only do we know about yummy park we know about her family we know about the people that lived in her town we know about the people of north korea we know that they exist by reading this book read this book and get everyone you can you know to read this book right and i'm not trying to sell copies we don't have it's not an ad we don't have an endorsement here i don't care if you go and borrow it all the same copy from the library or buy one copy and spread it through everybody in your same town everyone you know should read this book because there are people in this world that will die without everyone anyone ever knowing that they existed and that's one of the darkest things that i can fathom so with that, this book was incredible. It was a very easy read. It took me 15 days. There is no reason that people are not reading to or listening to this book. This is knowledge everyone should have in this country, especially youth, especially the youth in this country should have this information. So with that, I will move on to the preview portion of this episode. So the preview is for the indifferent stars above by daniel james brown this book i'm gonna tell you i've already started it and i <laughs> i already started it right to stay ahead for content purposes and i started it and i was like oh it'll probably take me a little bit to get into it's probably going to be like a little bit dark this is about the donner party right the sub the sub subtitle the harrowing saga of the donner party it's going to be a dark book, right? So I was like, it might, it's going to be very dry, maybe. It might take me a little bit to get into it. This guy is such a fucking good writer. I had to read another book so I would stop reading this book. I now only read this book in the bathroom because if I didn't stop reading it, I would finish it before March started. It's that good. I'm not just saying it because I want people to be in the book club. I'm telling you because this book is fucking so stupid good. And it's... It follows the story of one girl in particular in the Donner Party named Sarah 
Graves, right? And it says in the prologue to this that one of the reasons he picked Sarah Graves is because she's a difficult subject. She didn't write that much in her diary. A lot of people didn't talk that much about her. She was very young. So the notes portion in the back is enormous, right? Let's read on, read on about the author. Oh, damn, I should have read that. Didn't even think. I did read that, of course. Um, so these are the notes these are these are just the chapter notes right this portion here of this book that's um let's see page 296 to 337 that's a healthy portion of notes they're all numbered and so you can go through in order to say well that's a quotation where did you get this quotation there's a very specific list where did you get this very specific list it's all in here i've used it multiple times daniel james brown excellent He's written a few other books, including, it says even on here, The Boys in the Boat, I was telling Colin before, which is a story about a crew team from UW of working class men who went and defeated a obviously feared Nazi crew team in the Olympics. So, incredible story. They're making a movie out of it, or they already made out of a movie. They already made a movie out of it. There is the other books, of course, I didn't pull up. What's called The Faces of the Mountain, right, Colin? Or In the Face of the Mountain. And that one is about the Japanese regiment, the U United States Japanese Regiment of the Army in World War II. There is a few other books that he's written. They all seem to be very highly touted. They're all very legit. Um, he's still active. He lives in Redmond. He did an interview as recently as last year with, excuse me, one of the Seattle libraries because... For his book, The Faces in the Mountain, um, or In the Face of the Mountain. And I saw a little bit of that video. It was on Zoom, though, and I was like, oh, I'm definitely not going to watch this. So I can't stand, side note, can't stand Zoom interviews. Can't stand uh, distance interviews over the phone. Can't stand it. Can't stand listening to it. Hate watching it. I know we've done it a few times. Can't stand it personally. That's just a, it's a personal thing. I don't like listening to it. It's my own beef. So either way, Daniel James Brown, can't recommend this book enough. Um, page and pace, right? So let's see. We are pages not including chapter notes. We're looking at these are the acknowledgments here. Appendix 288 pages. That's not that much. So we'll do some real quick math here. I'm going to pull up my calculator. 288 pages. We got 31 days in March, right? Divided by 31 is 9.29 pages a day. So that's like the same as it was last time. 10 pages. 10 pages a day. That's not that much, right? Totally doable. 10 pages a day. Uh, I think that it is. I, don't, I really don't see any reason it's not doable. And I'm not saying sit down and read 10 pages fucking right now, right? I don't. I rarely sit down and read 10 pages at a time. I read in my car a lot during lunch. I read in the bathroom. I read in the morning if I have a minute or two. Yeah, there's. you can be on your phone or you can read for two pages, right? There And it's... I know it's so crazy to think maybe don't fucking scroll social media for five minutes. It's, it's, it's insane. I can guarantee you'll get more. I run a social media company. This, this, we host it on the internet. It's all through social media. It's not like I don't understand the importance of social media, right? I have to also be on social media. However, read a goddamn book. I guarantee you that you will get more out of reading this book than you will out of whatever time you're going to spend on social media if you don't run a business through social media. In which case, you're doing that during business time anyway. So what are we really talking about? Read some more books. I was talking to Brian about it. Fucking Brian. I've always talked to him. No one knows who he is. I've talked about him like three or four times. So Brian's the guy that I work with. I showed him one stack of the books. And he's like, oh, I really like history books. So maybe 1776. So the other day, I said, Brian, this book is about the Donner Party. It's an excellent book, right? I started reading it. Shane's been listening to it. Shane finished it in a week. He listened. Shane finished it in a week because he said it was so good. It gets better and better and better, right? So I was telling Brian, you should read this book. It's about a darn party. It's fucked up. And I'm showing it to him. And I was like, yeah, I had to stop reading it uh, so that I didn't finish it too quickly. And he looks at me and he says, so are you like giving this to me to read? And I said, no, Brian, I'm telling you that you should buy this book and you should read it. I'm not going to give you my copy of it. <laughs> but either way, this book, I've had it for a few years, I think, but it was $14.99. Bought it in the store. So $15 because I'm trying to keep them all under $25. I can't say that for certain. I don't know what all the prices are of the books. I know they're all relatively cheap because I don't like to buy books that are super expensive. So I also prefer hardcovers. So the hardcover had to be too expensive because I have a software book, so a paperback book. But I much prefer a hardcover book. I think most people do. Sound off in the comments. Do you prefer a hardcover or softcover book? Because I think people go either way. But a hardcover lasts longer, right? It's got to. I mean, it, depending on how you... 
a hardcover is going to last longer. I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing my stake right now. A hardcover is going to last longer. So page and pace for this book, 10 pages, 31 days, different stars above Daniel James Brown narrated by Michael Pritchard. Oh, the length of the book. This is 10 hours, 55 minutes. That ain't shit. Yeah, that's nothing, you know? So that's no problem. That's the audiobook. 10 hours, 55 minutes for the audiobook. So you're 11 hours. That's cake. You spread that out over a month, no problem. And I've told other people, I don't care if you're doing audiobook. It doesn't matter to me. I'm doing this because my initial challenge was I want to read 12 books this year, right? So I did John Adams first. We talked about this before. Now we got these other 11 books. I had to start reading another book. I'm talking about this for a quick moment. Uh, not too much because I found out he's kind of a leftist. So we're not going to give him... Yeah, we're not going to pump him too much. But we're going to talk about it because I'm reading this book, right? The series of unfortunate events. This was a series that I read when I was a child. I bet many of you have read this book. I have the whole series in my house. And I was like, what's a really easy book, a third book that I can pick up that I can start going for things? Because I'm also reading this, uh, what is it called? The, the Birthing Partner, right? Jordan gave me this book. Actually, Aaron gave me this book and Jordan asked me to read it. Um, we are having our baby at home this baby uh so i'm gonna be more involved than i was the last time around uh so this is a book that i picked up at the birthing partner there's a lot of like uh i love you there's a lot of like uh, bullet points and stuff like that it's really pretty easy to finish so i wanted to pick up another book that was for entertainment we also have another book a fiction book coming up later in the series world war z and i'm not a huge fiction fan so i want to warm myself up to it so the series of a series of unfortunate events is written by lemony snicket which is actually a pen name for a man named daniel handler i once met the man when i was a child my mother took me out of school i went to a barnes and noble thinking like bellevue or some such shit um and he was doing a book signing and reading and so he went there presenting himself as daniel handler who i believe he said was the agent for lemony snicket because he it was mostly children you know so he's keeping up the the deal i think i was probably like 11 years old or something like that um and i whatever year the 11th book of the series came out that's how old i was so um because that's i think i have the 10th book signed by him and then that one and another one have like a little uh, stamp little imprinter thing that they use it's very cool it was a very cool little event so shout out daniel handler daniel handler you wrote some good books let me snick it i also found out this is why i said this i when telling tyler about it this week um i found out he donated a million dollars to planned parenthood and something that's a that's a shitload of money million dollars and i'm not like oh planned parenthood but that's a shitload of money so and he lives in san fran so not a good look. Not a good look, Daniel Handler. Not a good look. So, um, review, preview, pages to paste. What did I know before I started this, right? What did I know about the Donner, Par Donner Party before I started this book? Uh, not really shit. I knew that there was a group of people that I thought they were on the Oregon Trail. Turns out they were actually going to California, right? So, they're essentially the same thing. At a certain point, they do branch off into two different places. Their ending point was in California, right? So was a group of many different people this book the graves i think these people left from kentucky illinois they left from illinois and the town they were from is called lincoln and the week after they left abraham lincoln rolled through on his very first congressional bid right the week after they left yes the week i know a bunch of stupid assholes they also left several weeks too late into the season um and that's how they ended up getting trapped right so i knew there was a group of people, I thought it was really just like the Donner family, so I thought it was a small group of people that got lost in the mountains on the way to wherever they were going, and then they had to eat each other. I didn't think that really anybody had made it out. Um, I wouldn't have really guessed either way. I probably would have guessed, but I wouldn't have known either way. And that was about it. So it's a far bigger story than that, obviously. There was a whole gang of people that was with them, but their two brothers that were at the head of the party when it started were the Donner brothers. So the whole parties are just named after, obviously, the people in front or the people, most influential people. The Donners are the people in front. Some of the other influ influential people were the Graves, Franklin Graves and his family, uh, James Reed, who was one of the most affluent people on there. He ends up, we'll talk about this later, but uh, later in like the live streams and stuff, he ended up stabbing a guy on this voyage and was exiled from the group and he made it to california before everybody else and escaped this whole entire thing yeah so they tried to punish him but he was the only person who didn't have to eat anybody well not the only person but one of very few people who didn't have to eat another human being on this voyage so jokes on you motherfuckers um 
Yeah, so I didn't know that much about it, but I am a little bit into this book now, and I can tell you it's extremely interesting. I I can't recommend it enough. Um, I guess one fun thing that I'll tell you is that we did pick up a potential baby name out of here is Reason, right? There's a man in this book named Reason Penelope Tucker, and uh, he was an Irishman, His parents or parents were from Ireland. I think he was from like Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, I uh, reason Penelope Tucker, enormous man. I think him and I were of sim- similar stature, so enormous for 1830. I'm still very big for 2022, but I'm not enormous. Um, so very cool. There's lots of really fun things in this book. It's very detailed um, because of the notes are so heavy. The, a lot of it's like just very detailed lists of things that they had with them or reasons they went, things they were thinking. Um, there's so many diaries and journals and things like that for the time that it's very easy to get that information. Daniel James Brown also hiked a large portion of this trail by himself in the snow or himself in the snow so that he could experience what it was like, have a better idea of what was going on. I did learn when they were in the Sierra Nevadas, right? It was the worst blizzard at the time this book was written, the worst blizzard the Sierra Nevadas had had ever seen was the the winter that the Donner Party tried to cross. I think they had nine blizzards in one winter in the Sierra Nevadas. Just happens to be, they had some of the worst goddamn look anybody has ever had, ever. So (laughs) with that, I think we can probably call this an end. I don't want to read any quotations out of this yet because um, because no one's ready yet. It's a preview, duh. So um, I'll read the back and then we can move on. So in April of 1846, 21-year-old Sarah Graves, intent on a better future, set out from Illinois with her new husband, her parents, and eight siblings. Seven months later, after joining a party of pioneers led by George Donner, they reached the Sierra Nevada mountains as the first heavy snows of the season closed the pass ahead of them. In early December, December, starving and desperate, Sarah and 14 others set out for California on snowshoes and over the next 32 days endured most unfathomable hardships and horrors. In this gripping narrative, the New York Times bestselling author Daniel James Brown sheds new light on one of the most legendary events in American history. Following every painful footstep of Sarah's journey with the Donner Party, Brown produces a tale both spellbinding and richly informative. I'm telling you. So, this book is excellent. You have a few more days. What I don't have the date on my watch right now. Today is the 19th. So, you got some time. You got nine days to go out and get the book. Even then, it's only going to take 10 pages a day. So, if you read quicker than that, which I think... Most people are. I think once you get into this book, you're going to read more than 10 pages a day because it's so goddamn good. So you got a few days, got some wiggle room. We will have the first, let's see, I'll pull up my calendar here, tell you when the first March live stream is. The first March live stream will be on uh, uh, the 3rd. Maybe we'll do the 10th. We're going to call it the 10th, right? This is going to drop on the 1st, so you're watching this. It's the 1st. Maybe this, it might be the 3rd that you're watching this, right? But we're not going to do a live stream today. We're going to do a live stream on the 10th, March 10th. We the very first live stream. We'll have the second on the 17th, the third on the 24th. That'll be excellent because the fourth one will be the 31st and the video will drop the next day. So we will have three live streams for this book, 10th, 17th, and 24th. There we go. That will be the March schedule. We will keep pace. I will do updates. We'll keep everything going. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, everyone who's in the book club. This has been an excellent journey. I appreciate and love talking to all of you about these books. I appreciate everyone's different perspective on what they're reading. So I want to thank you for joining us here, Solid Streets YouTube. Obviously, we have our Instagram at Solid Streets, our Facebook, fuck Facebook at Solid Streets. We have our own personal social media. I'm at Solid Street on Twitter and at Alpaca underscore Donovan on Instagram. Colin is at Big Bird Off. on both of those things. We also have our Patreon. Go to our Patreon. Sign up there. We have different tiers there. We have the newsletters that come out on the last day of the month. We have all kinds of different content there. Help us make more, better content just like this, right? Just like this. Things like this. Go there. Sign up. Help us make things. Discord, we have our own special dedicated channel just for the book club. So it's there. We post all the old live streams. With that, soldistries.com for all this information. Thank you again. Uh, Keep booking it up. Yes. Yes.